Whatever happened to modified Newtonian dynamics, that ambitious alternative to Einstein's gravity, which supposedly made dark matter superfluous? Two years ago, some researchers claimed they'd all but killed it, but that proved to be rather controversial. Today, I have three new papers, one with a new theory and two much needed updates about the data analysis. Let's have a look. Astrophysicists have many observations that they can't explain with normal gravity and normal matter combined, such as gravitational lenses that are too strong or galaxies that rotate too fast. They normally explain these observations with dark matter. That's some sort of matter that we've never seen in the laboratory that makes up 80% of matter in the universe and that makes itself noticeable only by its gravitational pull. The alternative explanation is to change something about the law of gravity. That is, one needs a modification of gravity. We can't just entirely kick out the law of gravity, of course, because we've measured it to high precision on Earth and in the solar system. So the idea of modified Newtonian dynamics, MOND for short, is that at some point the usual 1 over R square law of Newtonian gravity must cross over into a 1 over R law of modified gravity. This crossover should happen in the range of binary star systems. If they're close together, they should obey the laws of normal gravity, but if they're far apart, then they should feel the modified gravity. These far apart binary systems are called wide binaries and for a long time we had no good data for them. This, however, changed two years ago with the Gaia mission. The confusing thing is though that two camps did different analyses of the same data and arrived at different conclusions. One author said that Mond was confirmed, but another one said it was ruled out and the first one made a mistake. But recently things have progressed. The first news is that the author who found support for Mond has addressed the criticism. He's now done a more sophisticated data analysis in which he reconstructed full 3D orbits for the binary systems. The result still prefers Mond at 4.2 sigma significance. So that moves my Mondometer slightly to the Mond side. The second paper I have today comes from a third group which that they did an independent test of the data and they also think it supports Newtonian gravity and speaks against Mond. So that moves my Mondometer back towards dark matter. Why can these people not agree? The issue is that some of the wide binaries in this data sample are actually triples. That's a close binary system with a third companion further off. These triples are hard to tell apart from wide binaries, but they would seemingly increase the acceleration exactly where Mond says it should increase. The discrepancy between the data analyses comes down to how the groups take care of the triple problem. The one method is to find a way to throw them all out. That's the case that supports Newtonian gravity. But the other camp says, no, you've thrown out the signal with it. You need to instead estimate the number of triples from short distances and then extrapolate. Honestly, I can see the rationale for both so I think that debate isn't quite over. Meanwhile, we also have progress on the theory side. Pavel Krupa, one of the biggest and most outspoken supporters of Mond, has written a paper with several colleagues in which they present an improved version of Mond that they say can solve some problems. Ever since Mond was introduced in the 1980s by Mordai Milgram, it's had trouble explaining the motions observed in galaxy clusters. More recently, it also became apparent that it struggles with small galaxies, the so-called dwarf galaxies. In the new paper now, the authors introduce a generalized version of Mond that they say can explain the observations on galaxies and dwarf galaxies and galaxy clusters. Good thing, you might say. Yes, but it comes at the cost of introducing another parameter that basically interpolates between what is already an interpolation. I strongly doubt that this is going to convince critics. 
So after taking into account all three new papers, I've updated my priors and the Mondometer still lingers on the dark side. Mond adds parameters, dark matter adds particles. I'm adding cheese, at least mine is edible. I used to get a lot of scam calls. And then I found out that this happened because my phone number had leaked from some websites I must have signed up to. I now have a new phone number and I'm signed up to Incogni to prevent that from happening again. You see, each time you open a website, it'll try to collect data about who you are and where you are and what other websites you've visited. If you then sign up for a website and fill in your personal details, they can and often do make money by selling your private information to data brokers. Most countries have laws against that and you can ask for your data to be removed but doing this takes up a lot of time. Incogni automates the process of getting you out of those databases. You sign up and they'll contact the big sinners, request that your personal details be removed, and they'll keep on doing that. And if you want, send you updates about the progress they're making. I'm glad there's now a simple solution to stop unfriendly people doing nasty things with my personal details. Incogni is super easy to use. You sign up, give them the information they should look for, and they go to work, like within a minute, basically. It's really solved a problem for me, and maybe it'll help you too. If you use my code Zabina or the custom link in the info below, you'll get 60% off of Incogni. That's an amazing deal, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.